Peace be unto you, brethren. Today's lesson will be about Jeremiah chapter 51. Alright, so I'm going to reveal to you um, the mystery of Jeremiah chapter 51. Alright, so we should acknowledge the mystery of God. Alright, according to what the scripture says. Alright, we should acknowledge that it is a mystery. Alright, so just let, let, let us begin. Alright, so we go to let's go to second one. See if it's all right. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. It says that your hearts might be comforted right that our hearts might be comforted and comforted through the scriptures all right it says that our hearts might be comforted being knit together in love unto all riches all right so it should be knit, knit together in love that's how we are joined together through love right it says um and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding so that unto the full assurance of understanding all right so there will come a, come, come a point after after you have um, studied for a while then you begin to understand right you begin to understand and you'll have the full assurance meaning you are, you, 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 you know that um, you know for a surety, surety that you, you are safe <laughs> all right you get that um, you get it very plain be very made very plain to you if you are saved or not right you actually see yourself in the kingdom when you read the scriptures all right so it says and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding see the riches of knowledge that's how you get the understanding for the knowledge of the holy is understanding all right so it says so to the acknowledgement of the mystery of god so we should acknowledge that it is a mystery See, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. <laughs> Alright? Because we once didn't understand, right? At one point in time, we didn't understand in, in the past, but now we understand. Alright? So we acknowledging that it is a mystery, for real. <laughs> Alright? So it says, and of the Father and of Christ. So the Father and Christ is a mystery. Alright? So we have to seek Him. Show in Proverbs. Then I go to Jeremiah, um, to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. It says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. See, those that seek him early shall find him. And he says he loved those that love him. All right? And Christ said that we should love our enemies. All right? So, so we we'll say the new covenant, we we'll see that Christ brought something new you see that cause um, he said that if we love those that love us what reward do we have of, of um, our father which is in heaven because even sinners love those that lo um, love them <laughs> right so we should love our enemies and in loving our enemies that is how we we, we destroy the world all right that's how we remove the sinful um, things out of out of man all right, so he says, "I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me." Yeah, so we do love those that love us, <laughs> All right? Because Satan love towards us is hate. <laughs> All right, so let's let's go on now. Um, let's go to Jeremiah now. Let's go to Jeremiah. So it's a mystery, and you know, um. It is revealed to those that to those that fear him. All right, so let's go to Jeremiah fifty-one. All right, Jeremiah chapter fifty-one, verse one. It says, "Thus saith the Lord: Behold, I raise up against Babylon, right? I know that Babylon is she which had made the world full with the wine of her fornication. The wine of her fornication is her lies." All right, let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 17 Alright, 
right so this is revelation chapter yeah, revelation chapter 18 verse 3 it says for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication so that's what she's pouring out her wrath right upon the kings of the earth and upon the nations right so she hates she hates you people right she hates the people of god all right so she's feeding them with the wine of her fornication which is lies all right so watch this says for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her right because they are now believing in themselves and not believing on christ you see them believing in themselves them trusting in their own counsels right so it says and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies so the earth is wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies which is her lies because remember i read that we um we obtain riches to the full assurance at the, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of god all right i'm sure let's, let's go back to that one let's go back to colossians colossians chapter 2 verse 2 it says that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto the all riches of the full assurance of understanding so that and unto all riches so we so we have the riches of christ all right we have the riches of christ but there's a riches which is the riches of satan and those riches profit nothing right so watching us going it says and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies <laughs> so we see the, we see the contrast right between mystery babylon and um and the church right our new jerusalem then we see the difference all right so let's go to um let's go back now so so we know who babylon is right so let's go back now yes and i was babylon so you're actually reading about me <laughs> right babylon which is burned with fire and is now become tributary to the lord <laughs> right so yeah so yeah so we're reading of me in the past all right but it says jeremiah 51 verse one it says thus say the lord behold i'll raise up against babylon right he will raise up against the sinful nation which was i i was that sinful nation i says and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind all right so the lord said that he raised up a destroying wind against them that rise up against him all right so what is this destroying wind let's find what's this destroying wind that is he's um He's rising up against them that rise up against him all right so let's find this let's go to psalm 135 no let's go to jeremiah 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 chapter 10. all right jeremiah chapter 10 verse 13 it says when he uttered his voice right when he speaks right there is a multitude of waters in the heavens i know that waters is people multitude nations and tongues when the Almighty speaks, it is a host of people speaking at the same time. All right, so watch now. It says, He had made, when he uttered his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens. Right? And the heavens is basically those that preserve knowledge. Right? Those that are clothed in sackcloth. All right? So it says, um, And he caused the vapors to ascend from the earth. Well, and he caused the vapors to ascend from the earth, from the ends of the earth. Yeah, for I remember Christ ascended into heaven, right? He caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, and Christ is the ends of ends of the world. But when he come, it was destruction upon Babylon when Christ came. Right? When he began when he began his mi ministry, it was destruction upon Babylon. <laughs> right? So let's go on now. It says, when he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. Even the prayers go up as vapors. In this word that I'm speaking to is as vapors, right? So it says, He maketh lightnings with rain. The same word, for He shall give the what? The rain of thy seed. And the seed is the word of God. The rain of thy seed is in Isaiah chapter 30, right? So it says, um, 
and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth, he maketh the lightnings with rain, so that he shall give the rain of thy seed. And in De Deuteronomy chapter 32, he says, My speech shall drop as the rain, <laughs> right? Upon the tender herb, my speech shall distill as the dew, all right? So, let's go ahead and say, um, Bring it forth the wind out of his treasures. No, he bring it forth the wind out, out of his treasures. And we had read that he raised up a destroying wind against Babylon. <laughs> right? And he says he bring it forth the wind out of his treasures. So the wind that he's going to use to destroy Babylon is coming forth out of his treasures. Now let's find out what is his treasures. Alright, let's go to Psalm 135. Psalm 135. Psalm 135. Verse 4 it says, For the Lord had chosen Jacob unto himself. See that? The Lord had chosen Jacob unto himself. Yes, he has separated us unto himself. He has separated, he has separated us from among men. We are now as chaste virgins. Right? So it's God and it says, For the Lord had chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. See that? Israel for his peculiar treasure. And he bring it forth the wind out of his treasures. So he's bringing forth the wind out of Jacob, his chosen. Yeah, he's bringing forth out of, out of the tribe of Judah. See, he's bringing forth the wind out of the tribe of Judah. For he has the what? He has the winds in his fist. <laughs> right? And his fist is now speaking to you. Alright? Right? He's, he teaches with his, with, his, with his fist. <laughs> and his hands. And his feet. Right? So, let's go to... Um, uh, let's go to... Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 51. So, know where the wind is coming from. It's coming from out of the house of Israel. Alright. Go to Jeremiah chapter 51 now. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 1. He said, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I'll raise up against Babylon. Right? Let's go to Isaiah. He says he's going to raise up against Babylon, right? Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. He says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Right? So he's rising up the house of Israel against Babylon. Right? Let's go to um let's go to Job. Book up Job chapter twenty. Book up Job chapter twenty four, verse fourteen. It says the murder arising with the light. So that the murder arising with the light. Let's go back to here. It says um Arise, shine, for thy light is come. See that? Arise, shine, for thy light is come. It says, The murderer arising with the light, killeth the poor and the needy, and the night is as a thief. Right? For he that is dead is free from sin. So he bringing forth the window out of his treasure to destroy Babylon, to make them clean, to make them desolate, to make them free from sin, right? Make them clean and empty. <laughs> right? Watch it. It says, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I raise up against Babylon. See, it says, Arise shine for the light is come it says and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind and i will send unto babylon fanners that shall fanner <laughs> see that he just said unto babylon fanners that shall fanner right to the house of israel it's funny now. it says and shall empty her land for in the day of trouble they be against her round about see that so we are against babylon round about we're surrounding her with spears and, and swords and bows and arrows. Alright. Which is which is the word. <laughs> so um let's go to Isaiah share something. Share something in Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah chapter forty one, verse fourteen. It says Fear not thou worm Jacob. See? So I am a worm. So the Lord called me a worm. He says, Fear not thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy redeemer the Holy One of Israel. See what it says? He will help thee. And that's what he has sent me to do. Help you, right? So it says, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing, threshing instrument, having teeth, so that he has made us new. For we are now in the new covenant, so he give us a new threshing instrument, a new weapon of war, right? Which is the new wine, right? Which is the new song. Alright, so let's go on now. He says, For 
yeah but behold i'll make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth thou shalt thresh the mountains right and the mountains is the house of israel right? it says and thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make them make the hill make the hills as chaff <laughs> yes i will do that through the word right through teaching you this gospel all right so it says thou shalt fan them see thou shalt fan them for he's bringing forth the wind out of his treasures he says thou shalt fan them and w and the wind shall carry them away <laughs> and the whirlwind shall scatter them right the whirlwind shall scatter the evil out of you so you shall scatter the evil from out of you let's go to proverbs proverbs chapter 20 verse 8 it says a king that sitteth in the throne of, of judgment scattered away all evil with his eyes <laughs> see that a king that sitteth in, in the throne of, of judgment scattered all evil with his eyes so right so i'm using my eyes to make it clean right now right because his eyes are a flame of fire see so we are burning babylon with fire right which is the word of god all right his word that you have put in our mouth so let's go back to here it says thou shalt fan them and and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the lord <laughs> and he said and thou shalt rejoice in the lord and shall glory in the holy one of israel yes we shall glory in him because he fight for us and we are victorious whenever he fight for us all right so he 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 shall not make us afraid in the face of our enemies all right so let's go on to jeremiah 51 it says and i will send unto babylon fanners that shall fanner <laughs> and shall and shall enter her land for in the day of trouble they they be against her roundabout yes yeah, so we are against her roundabout you know it says and against him that bendeth let it, let the archer bend his bow see against he that bendeth right because they were oppressing us so now because they have given us sorrow and torment we are giving her double we are repaying her for her, um, all her sorceries that she have done to us now the sorrow that she have given us let's go let's go to revelation chapter 18 now revelation chapter 13 at revelation chapter 13 verse 10 it says he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity right he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity right so he so 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 those that have put us in the captivity of sin shall go into the captivity of righteousness yes we shall repay them and make them desolate and make them clean we shall make them say our father thou art it um our father which art in heaven speaking of um speaking of ishi or, or, or speaking of christ right they will they'll, they'll be calling unto god <laughs> Right, because of their judgment, because of their affliction, they will, they will cry unto God. So that's so let, let's go on. It says, um, "He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity." Ephesians chapter four, verse eight. It says, "Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high." So okay, so. He said this when he went up on high. It says, and this is speaking of Christ. Christ said this when he went up on high. It says, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Right? So that's how you lead the captivity captive. When you ascend. Right? When you when, when you know uh, partake in the resurrection. The first resurrection. You see? It says, um, wherefore he said when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and give, gave, gave gifts unto men. So Christ was free from bondage because of his death. So that through death you are free from bondage. So we cannot fear death, right? We shouldn't, because through death we will, we shall overcome death, <laughs> right? So so leading captivity captive is basically when we triumph over our enemies through death and ascension. All right, let's go to. Um, so we are now free from sin and they are now in captivity to us. Right, true judgment. Alright, let's go to um where is it? Yeah, it says Wherefore he said when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Alright. Right, let's go back to this. He said he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You see that? So our enemies shall be in, 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 in bondage to us. 
go to Isaiah. This is speaking of Babylon. <laughs> and I was once that Babylon and now I'm in subjection to Christ. See, let's go. I'm sure something. Um, oh, is it Isaiah 45? Isaiah. All right. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 14 it says, Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merge of and the merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee. See that the merchandise, see? So the Lord maketh men as treasures, see, as merchandise, as goods. Right? So he sees us as products or goods. Right? For sale. <laughs> right? That's so what it says. Thus saith the Lord, for the Lord is a merchant. And the, and, and, and the balance is of, of, of deceit are in his hand. That's in Hosea. <laughs> right? But it says, um, Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt, the merchandise of Ethiopia and, the, and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee. See that? So the merchandise of Ethiopia is men. That's what the, the merchandise of Ethiopia is. And the merchandise of Egypt is men as well. And, and of, of the Sabians is men. Right? So it says, and they shall, shall come over unto thee. See? So they shall come into captivity and us when we are when we are set on high. You see that? So what you know it says. And they shall be thine. See, they shall be ours. <laughs> they shall be ours. It says, um saying, hold on, and they shall fall down. It says, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee. See? So they shall know that God is in us and make supplications unto us. Right? So it says, And there is none else, there is no there is no God. <laughs> I'll hear verse 15. For verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel the Saviour. So he is a God that hides himself. He hides himself in the tomb, which is me. My body is in my, my heart. But the Holy Spirit said that he shall dwell in the hearts of his prophets. Right, that's what it says in the Kebanegas. Right, the Holy Spirit said, I shall dwell in the hearts of the prophets. Right, in the hearts of righteous men. So let's go on now. So it says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Yes, they shall go into captivity. Because why? Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews, let's go to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2. Verse 15 And deliver them through who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. See that? Those which were afraid of death were subject to bondage all their life. Because they are afraid to plow. They were afraid to sow seed. <laughs> they were afraid to war against Babylon. Right? So because of that they were they they died in, in bondage. <laughs> Right? And they did not lead their captivity captive. They didn't partake in the resurrection. See? That's what it says. I mean, they were still in sin. When we now know the truth and it's free from sin, we have led captivity captive. Because if we die, we shall resurrect after three and a half days. You understand? So, it says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Yes. So after that, so after the beast which are sent out to the bottomless pit shall make war at the saints and overcome them and kill them, then after three and a half days, the spirit of life from God shall enter into the bodies. Alright? And we shall ascend. Alright? So what you know, it says, He that kill it with the sword must also be killed with the sword. So when we ascend, then after that, doors of heaven will be open, and they shall see the ark of his testament in the heavens. <laughs> and the holy angels, and they, and they shall descend. And, 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 and every man shall be judged out of all things written in the books alright so watch you know, it says it says um, he that okay, he that leadeth into cap hold on so he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith faith, faith of the saints let's go to Revelation 11 verse 12 verse 19 no it says, verse 19, And the temple of God was opened in heaven. See that? After the ascension, right? The temple of God will be opened in heaven. And when I say heaven, I'm literally talking the sky, in the sky above you. Right? It says, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in the temple the 
ark of his testament because remember Moses was ordered to make an ark after the pattern which was shown to him in the mo in, in, in the, the mountain all right and the pattern which he was shown in the mountain was the heavenly pattern the pattern of the ark which was in heaven see so he built a physical ark representing that spiritual ark which is in which dwelleth in, in heaven right which is in the sky that's what you know says and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in the temple of the ark of his testament and there was lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail see he that killed with the sword must also be killed with the sword and the sword is what the hail and the earthquake and the thunderings and the lightnings <laughs> you see that's the sword that they shall be killed with right so he that killed with the sword must also be killed with the sword so, so let's go back so they have so now so, so they have been killed with the sword the men of babylon let's go to jeremiah go back to jeremiah 51 Jeremiah 51 verse 3 says, Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifted up himself up in his brigandine, and, and spear ye not her young men, destroy, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. See, so should destroy, utterly destroy all the inhabitants of Babylon, spiritually. <laughs> so let's go to, um, where is it? Um, yeah, let's go to Psalm chapter six. 64 yes yeah. Psalm chapter 64 verse verse 2 it says hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked see that hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked right and the wicked dwell it in secret and they make plans in secret they devise mischief in secret you know things that they might do to the world you understand so what you know? it says hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection see from the rebellious from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity See that the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, they are rebelling against their creator. Alright? The men of Babylon is rebelling against their creator. Alright, so himself, himself who wet, and this wet it means to sharpen. He says, who wet their tongues like a sword <laughs> and bend their bows, see? To bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. So notice he says, let's, let's, let's go back to here, it says, against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. <laughs> See it against him that bend it because they bend their bows, so we are so we are bending our bows against them because they have made us desolate, so we are now paying them double. Right, that they might know that he is the Lord. Right, what you know. Let's go to go back. Yeah, it says Um Who wet their tongue like a sword. This is Psalm sixty four verse three. Who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Alright. Let's go up and say, against him that bend, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifted up himself in his brigandine, or brigandine, and this is a armor, armor, tough armor, ancient armor, all right, worn by, you know, men of war back then, right? So I'm saying, um, say, and spare ye not her young men, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. Yes, yeah, spare ye not her young men. Peter, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 3 Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 4 says And mine eye shall not spare thee See that? Mine eye shall not spare thee I know that his eyes are what? Those are preserved knowledge And he, he, he what the king scattered away evil with his eyes <laughs> Right? So he says And mine eye shall not spare thee Neither will I have pity But I will recompense thy ways upon thee And thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee And he shall know that I am the Lord See that your abomination shall be in the midst of you for you shall know your sins you shall know your transgressions and in knowing your transgressions then you'll be able to do the right thing so you'll be able now to keep his commandments because you now know how to keep his commandments so it says and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee and you shall know that i am the lord verse 5 thus said the lord thus said the lord god and evil and only evil behold is come right so it's gonna let's go to um go back to jeremiah go back to jeremiah let's 
Jeremiah 51. So see that his eye will not spare the men of Babylon, right? And he did not spear me. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ravished by, by, by love. <laughs> I've been ravished by love, right? So it says, Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow, and against him that lifted up his, himself up in his brigandine, and spear ye not her young men. See that spear ye not her young men, for his body's eye shall not spear thee, right? It says, Destroy uh, ye uh, destroy ye utterly all her hosts. See? Destroy utterly all her hosts. Thus, thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans and they that are thrust through in her streets, right? This is the time of harvest, right? They shall be cut down and gathered, right? So it says, thus, it, thus, thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans and they, shall, and they that are thrust through in her streets, <laughs> right? They that are thrust through in her streets. Let's go, let's go to... Um, and the streets is within you, you know. That's where the street is. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna prove it to you. Isaiah 66 verse 15. It says, "For the Lord will come with fire, so that He shall come with fire, and with His chariots like a whirlwind." And it is happening now, right? His voice as a whirlwind. He says to render His anger with fury and His rebu rebuke with flames of fire. <laughs> and the flame of fire is the word because you're learning, and in learning, you're now made clean. It says. For by fire and by his word will the, the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. See that? The slain of the Lord shall be many. <laughs> now here it is here verse 17 says, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, said the Lord. And the swine flesh that they're eating is a doctrine. It's not physical swine flesh. Right? And a physical swine flesh is a doctrine them eating, right? Which is an abomination, right? Which is the wine of Babylon. That's what that's what the swine's flesh is, the wine of Babylon, right? Because she wallow it in her filth, right? Let's go to um. Let's go to. Yeah, hold on. So I was going. here now yeah go to Jeremiah Jeremiah 51 verse 4 says, thus, thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, see? For the slain of the Lord shall be many, and in this slain, the slain shall, be ha shall happen by fire, and by the sword, right? and by famine. Alright, so let's go and it says, And they that are thrust through in her streets, alright, those that are thrust through in her streets. And I was going to say, I, was, I said I was going to prove so that the streets is that people are, are in the people. But the Nehemiah. Okay, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 3, it says, And he read therein before the street. See, he read before the street. He read out of the law before the street. He read out of the book before the street, right? And the street is the people. See what I'm saying? And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate, from the morning until midday. So why, why would he be reading to the street, which cannot hear, nor speak, nor cannot respond? Right? These are people him talking to the street. Right, sir. And he's read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until day, before the men and the women. See that he he was reading out of the book. He says, and those that could understand, see those that could understand. <laughs> so he read before those that could understand. And those which were reading did understand. He says, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. See, so your ears should be attentive unto the book. 
and to what it is saying. See? So it's very important when I'm reading out this book. Alright. You know, the Lord corrected whosoever he loved it. You know? Jeremiah 51 verse 4 says, Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through inner streets. <laughs> that they that are thrust through inner streets. See, so this is happening to the people. Judgment is upon Babylon. Judgment is upon those that do not believe in Christ. St. John, let's go to St. John. St. John chapter 16, verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. You see that? Of sin because they believe not on me. So the men of Babylon are now as a, are now as a threshing floor to us. Meaning they, they are now like punching bags. Alright? That they may become righteous. You see, because what? They believe not on him. So they have to get beaten. They have to be corrected with a rod. Alright? So it says, When he's come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. Alright? Let's go to Luke. Let's go to the book of Luke. Book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 42, it says, But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment. You see, so that's what a lot of these pastors is doing. Taking tithes from the people and passing over judgment, meaning they are not reading out of the book. See, them giving you their own counsel, their own words, their own conceits, their own vain thoughts, right? their own vain words. So, let, let me read it. It says, But want you Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs. And the mint, rue, and the herbs is, is, a, is the, the people. The herb is the people. And the mint and the rue is the people. Right? Let me show it to you. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 20. Isaiah chapter... Isaiah chapter 28 verse yeah, verse 25 it says when he hath made plain the face thereof doth he not cast abroad the fitches and scatter the coming I remember I read that a king scattereth, scattereth away all evil with his eyes hear what he's saying it says and scatter the cumin <laughs> and, and cast in the principal wheat right which is what the principal the principal of the flock <laughs> can look at it that way Right, the, the principal shepherd, right? It says, the principal wheat, can remember I said that, let the wheat and the tears grow until the day after harvest. See, the wheat and the tears is the people, right? So, and the cast in the principal wheat and the appointed barley and the rye in their place. For his God, see, for his, for his God doth instruct him to discretion and doth teach him. Alright, so he teaches us this discretion. He teaches us what to do in certain situations according to the knowledge that we have at hand or the present knowledge that we have at our disposal right so he 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 calls us to make judgments based on the word then right he calls us to judge righteously all right so okay. for example let me give you an example like for example the, the extermination of rodents from or from from from, your, from in your house right and what do people do when they have an infestation of rodents in their house or pests? They exterminate them. So now, would God um, prevent them from entering the kingdom of heaven because they kill many, um, many of these pests? No, right? Because whosoever believes in Christ is justified of all things, right? And plus, um, uh, plus oh yeah plus suppose they are they are they are destroying your house suppose they are destroying your, your furniture right 
see it is it is it is justified let me share something let me share something let's go to go to um how do we not kill animals for consumption to eat <laughs> let's go to genesis i'm sharing genesis 9 genesis 9 so discretion is basically making a decision um given the situation and the conditions you know because um society is dynamic society changes over time all right so we also have to adjust to the to the modern times all right because scripture said that knowledge shall be increased so yeah, let's go to genesis 9 genesis chapter 9 Genesis chapter 9 verse okay. okay Genesis 9 verse 3 says every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you See, every living thing shall be meat for you even as the green herb have I given you all things right so how do we um consume these these edible animals how do we consume them <laughs> right before we consume them we have to kill them first all right who would want to eat a chicken that is alive and is able to run away from it can't even eat it in peace <laughs> right so but um so i hope i hope you get what i'm saying let me show you something um See if I can make really get you to really understand what I'm saying. Romans, what the Romans? Romans chapter. Romans chapter. Okay. Okay, yeah. Romans chapter 14, verse 20, it says, For meat destroy not the work of God. See that meat destroy not the work of God. Right? So if we eat physical swine flesh, it doesn't destroy the work of God. Because the work of God is to uh, baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them all things which He had commanded us. Alright? So, let's go to, um, yeah, what it says. For meat is trying at the work of God. For that meat is trying at the work of God. Because the work is to teach people. And it says, All things indeed are pure. You hear that? All things indeed are pure. But it is evil for that man who eat it with offense. <laughs> right? So if you're eating and you feel like it is wrong for you to be eating it, then don't eat it. <laughs> right? But a man like me, no. I'm 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 without guilt when I eat certain kinds of meats. I'm without guilt because of um, the measure of faith which is given unto me. Alright, so what it says. It is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine. No, he's saying something spiritual here. <laughs> it's not good to flesh to um it's not good to, to eat flesh nor to drink wine. I remember I was reading about them which commit abomination eating swine's flesh. Though that's those days that sanctified themselves eating swine's flesh and abomination, right? It's the same men of Babylon is speaking of, right? I'm sure it says it is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine. What's that wine? Let's go back again. 
But it's not wine we're not supposed to drink. Revelation 17 verse 2 with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication all right which is her doctrine the doctrine of lies all right so she says it is good neither to eat flesh see eat not the flesh of babylon <laughs> it says nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak hast thou faith have it to thyself before god Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he alloweth. So whatsoever you're doing, you shouldn't condemn yourself in that which you do. For that is sin. Right? And the Father will hold you accountable for that. Verse 2, 23 says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, see? Because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Alright. Now let's go to um go back to Jeremiah. So I was just explaining what explaining this question. So not now let's go back to where I was. Let's go back to here. So I was explaining how the Pharisees pass over judgment, meaning they don't read from the book. And some when they read from the book they also misinterpret. Let me show you something. Let's go to here. Go back to Luke again. Luke. Luke chapter 11, verse 42, it said, But want you Pharisees, for you tithe mint, so you tithe the people, so the people is the mint and the rue and the herbs, people, right? For he said, My speech shall be still as you, and my speech shall drop as the rain upon the grass and upon the tender herb. That's Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2 and 3, right? I can read from verse 1 to 3, right? So it says, But want you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue. And all manner of herbs, see, they tied the people. And it says, and herb and pass over judgment and the love of God. See, they don't teach people how to love love God. Right? For he said that if you love me, keep my commandments. He also said that if you love me, feed my lambs. You see? He says, these art these art ye to have done. See, they should have done this. And not leave the other undone. See, yeah? so they should have done this and should have not left the other one undone. Right? Which is what? They're passing over judgment, giving you their own counsels, right? So it's born to Babylon, right? That's why we are bending our bows at them. Let's go back. Let's go to Jeremiah. Bending our bows and shooting. And let's go back again. It says, "Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in their streets." See that the arrows are piercing them. It says. For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God. <laughs> Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God. Right? He says, His God of the Lord of hosts. Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. See, so though our land was filled with sin, see? As I was telling you, I was Mystery Babylon. That's what I was. I was Mystery Babylon. So he says, Um, Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. For he says, Yet yes, he said, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. That's in Isaiah chapter 1. Right? So he said, um, Flee out of the midst of Babylon. See, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. And how do we do that? The heart of the righteous studies to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. That is Proverbs 15, verse 28. Right? So he says, Flee, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in your iniquity. See that? Be not cut off in your iniquity. Right? Because the cutting off is happening now. For those that come against Jerusalem shall be cut in pieces. We shall be a burdensome stone for them. For we are a, for we are a terror to unrighteous works. We are not a terror to good works. But we are a terror to evil works. So it says... Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in your iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. And whosoever is cut off in your iniquity is made free from sin. Yeah, whosoever is cut off, <laughs> right? 
who say was cut off in the iniquity is, is no more doing evil right because they are now made low and silent they have been shut up but you know it says flee out of the midst of babylon and deliver every man his soul be not cut off in your iniquity for so he's just warning you <laughs> right it says for this is the time of the lord's vengeance he will render unto her a recompense see the lord shall rec render unto her a recompense all right 